We interrupt the interwebs with this story. The story of the Mac problem 2012. A long time ago, a year ago to be more precise, Mac was born in the House of Grays. Since then, it has been a trusted companion, and a Mac, well, and Mac, has helped Grays be more efficient when using a computer. Then it happened. He spilled Yulmust, a Swedish soda that sold during Christmas and Easter. Now, Mac has gone silent. To help Mac, Grays will have to enter, enter his innards by using a very small screwdriver. Only time will tell when Grays will obtain such a screwdriver. <laughs> Only time will tell when Grays will obtain such a screwdriver of so legendarily small proportions. And that's only the beginning. Long story short, Mac is on vacay and isn't coming back anytime soon. In the meantime, Grays will stick to his plan and keep on attacking the interwebs with his brainstorms. Hell. Now as Christmas 2012 is approaching, Grays is going for a more aggressive approach so that the episodes can be recorded and uploaded faster to decrease the amount of episodes that are backlogged. This is only the beginning, and Grays has chosen to press on, in pure Hunter style. This story had to be told. The truth had to be put out there. And the storms must continue until the rise of the one true. Key. Hello there. This is the Wower Gold Brainstorms minicast episode six. Um, I'm heading to the pizzeria. I don't even know if that's what it's called in the in English, but that's what we call it in Swedish. Swedish <laughs> pizzeria, and um, yeah, man, I've been listening to Twizzcast for the past two hours or something, on and off, actually longer. Um, episode twenty nine, I think it is, with uh, Reb from Ad Tank That Reb on Twitter. Go check her out. Follow her. Follow Twiggy KT and follow. Twizzle Tank, as well as the at Twizz Tank, uh, whatever you call that handle, nickname, whatever. Follow them all, support them. Great stuff. Uh, I'm really, I'm loving it. It's awesome. And uh, I have my, because uh, I get into these supporting sprees, and I'm, I'm just loving it. Uh, they had some great uh, discussions there about uh, all kinds of things, man. Uh, family, uh, buttholes. You know, in-game, doing things, you know, policing, uh, Blizzard, and the reporting system, the grinds, all kinds of stuff, great stuff, and uh, yeah, man, a little Gray, is, he's three months old, and he's enjoying it too, so we're going to listen to the podcast, sitting on the sofa, while he's been eating, and relaxing, and sometimes he's fallen asleep, I've fallen asleep, and we just keep on listening, and Great stuff, man. Awesome. So, I'm taking a break here. I'll get right back to you. Peace out. Yes, so I'm out the shop. Well, not the shop. Pizzeria. And um, I, won't, I won't really have time to get into any topics, really. But I just want to say, um, right now, currently, the way that I've handled things, uh, prioritizing, it's really worked out fucking great. I'm feeling really fucking awesome. Uh, this can work, uh, and I hope it does. So what have I done? I have, yesterday I was, uh, actually raided, uh, for the, I don't know, I don't know, about three hours. Ah! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Someone, uh, showed me that he's, he had gotten, a ah, uh, kluba, what the hell you call that? Like sweets, like the candy, but it's like a... Like you suck on him? I don't know. I can't find the fucking word right now. And he was happy and he was running by and he showed it to me. So, nice. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know the kid. So don't ask. No, I'm not. I'm not involved in Chester's candy van. For those that was, that was, that were listening to Rep Grand Radio back in the days. Um, 
So I'm not in, into the whole give kids candy and have them. Okay, never mind that. So, anyways, with the rating, man, it's awesome. Uh, we were in. Um, I was about to say dragon. So we were in Mogishon vaults. We killed the stone guards. Uh, we had amethyst, jasper, and jade. So no cobalt mines, which made movements uh, the movement a lot more, a lot less uh, random. Had things under control. And then we had Fang, uh, we got him down to 22%, so he's not dead. Uh, so when I spoke about him being down like the week after, I was, uh, I mean, I wasn't, even in the, I wasn't even in that first raid, so I guess I was overestimating, overestimating, or actually underestimating the encounter. But anyways, let's do this. Uh, I'm eating. Peace. Yes, um, I'm in the shopping mall, and uh, my girlfriend's looking for some, <laughs> I was about to say gear, I really was, but uh, she's looking for some clothes, and uh, yes, I'm really, uh, you know, when it comes to rating, I'm really excited, um, I've managed to, uh, I was there for the second kill of the stone guard, or Stone Guardian or Stone Guards, I don't know what the hell they're called, in Mogishan Vaults. And we got Feng down yesterday. And then we tried Garajal. And uh, it's interesting because the way that I look at it, Garajal is a simple fight. Um, it's not, I mean, there, there are things that can, that can go wrong, but there's not really that much to keep track of. But it seems like the, and the, the most important bit is the spirit totem switching. And it seems like um, people have issues, you know, planning ahead. And I think that's something that I've... I'm not really sure if it's because I've been following Kruparian's channel and watching some of his vids and also some other stuff that I've seen and, and really kept track of as well as um, listening to Out DPS Hunting Party podcast and, I don't know, but and Convert to Raid. Because I think I'm picking up stuff that really helps out on a subliminal, no, on a subconscious level that makes it so that I'm prepared before even I'm, before realizing that I'm prepared because with the boss I was like, okay, garage all, what do I know about this boss? It's kind of like every single boss from the first I'm kind of like, okay, okay, I, I know what's up to a certain extent and then, you know, Fang, haven't really done him and then noticing that, okay, it's this part and then it's that part and then it's that part and just breaking it down and like, okay, I got it down and then it just comes down to movement and, um, you know, handling cooldowns and, and just staying out of shit. And then, uh, you know, knowing when to, when to stack and when not to stack. And I think that's something that I've, that I've, and also since I have earlier experience, I think that makes it easier for me to take in information, even if it's during stressful, um, like, like, like during, I mean... I don't know. It's 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 hard to explain. And I'm not talking. I don't mean that I'm. I'm not a hardcore raider. I never did hardcore raiding. I never did any hard modes in old OR. I never did anything of that. I've only done normals. But in BC, I raided quite a lot. And I, and when I, I don't know, it feels like I um. When I've come back now, it it really, and raiding is my main focus. It really feels like I um, like I'm, you know, I'm playing to up my game, and I'm nowhere near where I want to be. But I'm, way. What can you call it? I'm, I, I can definitely tell that I'm a lot more um, um, dedicated about what I'm doing. You know, looking at the, I mean, the simple fact that I'm my gear level is right now it's 470. Um, so I could do Heart of Fear, but I've decided to only gear up through Mogishan vaults, and that's also a way for me to save time. Well, damn, I gotta go. Peace out. Yes, so this is a continuation of episode 6 of the Wara Gold Brainstorms minicast. Um, damn, I forgot to listen to what I was talking about last time I recorded, but uh, I'll just keep on going, I guess. Uh, and I want to 
keep this episode focused on rating. Um, so I'll probably be repeating myself <laughs> just to get back on track here. So the dogs are dead. Feng is dead. Garajal is alive. I was not there for the first uh, Stone Guards kill, um, but I was there for the second. And uh, with Garajal and just raiding in general uh, in a social guild, uh, it's it's interesting because from past experiences, um, and I'm in BC. I was in in like various semi-hardcore raiding guilds, so I would raid at least two times a week, usually three. Um, and it was, um, well, at least we called them semi-hardcore, I don't know, nowadays I would not, I would not throw around that word as, as, as easily, I mean, semi-hardcore is, I don't know, isn't that pretty hardcore? <laughs> uh, never mind that, but I mean like, okay, never mind that, that was a tangent, and I'm really happy that, um, I just gotta mention this, on Bronze Dragonflight EU, I'm happy that Misanthropy and Rude are keeping the horde uh, raiding spirit alive, you know, props to you guys, awesome stuff. They're uh, doing hardcore progression, and uh, last time I spoke to one in, one person in, uh, in Rude, they said that Misanthropy had two kills, and that they were doing, they were raiding almost daily, you know, they were really pushing hard for the content. So we'll see. Uh, there's been, yeah, never mind that. But, but long story short, I've been keeping track of certain people, and I know that I've had ex guildies in that guild, and I hope they still play. So I'm really happy for them, and I hope that that things are going well. Um, yes. So with rating, uh, a couple of things that I noticed when it comes to social guilds and rating is. You have um, you have the leadership bit. You have the officers, or you have you have like a core of raiders that basically raid every single time there's a raid. And uh, then you have a couple of people that might be a part of the core. That that's like yeah, they're there at least like ninety percent. And then you have people that that rotate more or less depending on the guild and depending on the structure and depending on like real life schedules and um, for I was listening I ah, shit can't remember which podcast right now but because I'm, I'm listening to you know tons of them but um, I mean it, it, it really comes down to yeah this was from Twizcast because it comes down to having it was about um, a casual guild trying to push for progression damn it might be convert to raid <laughs> It's one of those two podcasts, so you know. Either way, I'm 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 pretty head on there, you know, fifty percent, win some, lose some, and uh, yeah, they uh, there was a guild that they had mailed in a question, uh, the person there, and um, it came down to like if you want to do the switch from casual to uh, progression or whatever kind of guild, and you want to make sure that you push through content and and get bosses down and, and evolve as raiders and as a team um, the main thing was you know you got to have the same 10 people I mean if you're doing 10 mans if it's 25 um, I would argue that you can have a bigger rotation on 25s although I mean in mists it, if you if you have new people all the time you'll be having wipes due to the learning curve and then you need people that are really on the ball and really know what the fuck they're doing. And uh, sometimes you just have those players, like, they don't raid hardly at all. And then they come in and then they just own it. You know, they, they know what the hell they're doing. They have complete control of everything. And they basically perform as if they've raided there forever. And that kind of player is really... Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, am I getting goosebumps? <laughs> Or am I just happy that I'm, you know, my lunch break and the sun is shining and, you know, there was a little crow doing like a and, you know, a little dog walking here with his, ah, I can't find that word, Husse in Swedish, um, damn, Matte, Husse is the female version, uh, which is the human 
that walks with the dog. Anyway, uh, no, but really, I mean, it, it's really, it's a nice thing to see when, when you have people come in and they're like, okay, I can do this. And then the, the, everything they do is just fucking flawless and it's, it's epic. Um, and for my part, that's what I'm aiming to become. I'm really pushing myself to, I mean, every single week, I'll make sure to improve things that are connected to my character. And I'm not talking eye level. Uh, gear is not a part of it. I'm not farming gear in order to do higher DPS. What I'm doing is researching. Um, starting to get into World of Logs, you know. Read stuff there. Eventually compare and, you know. But anyways. Yeah, this is there's multiple topics going on here. But the thing is, with rating, what it comes down to is... I mean, it's, it's the person behind the computer the player playing um, if the person is dedicated uh, that person will know what the hell he's he or she is doing sorry nothing against females <laughs> and um, I mean it's really I mean you it's <sighs> how can I put it I mean I've been a slacker you know for tons of years I mean four five I don't know I've been a slacker for a long time. I mean, the end of BC, that's when I stopped raiding. And I'm sure I did some Wrath raiding like, end, like at the end of the expansion, but that's not really... I mean, that's having fun, but not, not really pushing progression. You know, that's more like, oh shit, oh yeah, I should raid. You know, I'm bored of this other, stu other, other stuff, so let me go do this, you know. Um, but I mean, now, this expansion, I'm, re I'm really pushing for, you know, progression. I'm really pushing for uh, becoming better as a player. And that's why I'm uh, keeping my eye level in check. Basically, what I'll do is I will only gear up through Mogashan Vaults, or if I get a hold of Valor Points, I will upgrade a piece up until, I don't know, I haven't really checked how high you can get them, but I will not go above Mogashan Vaults level. Because I'm, I'm not going for... I don't want to be the, the, the kind of player that's like, hey, I push through this content thanks to the gear I have. I have no skills. I just, you know, do what I'm told and I gear up. You know, fuck that shit. You know, I'm, 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 uh, I'll stick to my own methods. And I've uh, been tweeting tons because um, I, I do like these tweet chains. So I get an idea and then I just tweet it out and then I just keep on tweeting because I get more and more ideas. And I should actually use that as show notes for the show but i might do that for the next one who knows uh but i mean really it's um with rating it's awesome i'm, I'm loving it the bm hunter's back uh haven't seen that bastard since bc i mean sure uh pff, i leveled uh, in wrath <laughs> with the gorilladin brk what's up uh <laughs> he had an awesome video hey the gorilladin and i take down and i smash i can't even i can't really uh, imitate that guy but anyways uh <laughs> he had he had awesome videos with the gorilla din, and I actually named my own gorilla to gorilla din back then. And since then, I haven't touched BM really. I mean, I've done some odd respects, but I mean, I haven't really cared for it with the changes and whatnot. And it just hasn't made made any sense really made any sense for me to play it. I did some PvP as BM and Cataclysm, but not really nothing worth mentioning. So never mind that. Uh, but I'm glad that it's back. Uh, I do miss SV, um, but right now I'm, I'm going for the approach that I will be switching between SV and BM, and I'm really trying to get into BM, and I'm uh, getting into openers, because um, the whole thing with BM is, and I gotta say, Kriparian, genius, genius, awesome guy, uh, pure genius, <sighs> funny guy, <laughs> He's, I thought of this screw bag, not, not screw bag, scumbag dps or something he has a clip up there you gotta check it out i didn't watch all of it because it was late night but i gotta i gotta watch it because he, he's he's hilarious but anyways um and he, he gets deep into things he does when he's serious about it so and i like the way that he he has a good sense of humor and distance to what he's doing at the same time as he's fucking hardcore i like that but yeah with him he uh he's made a couple of videos um like how to, how to do top dbs uh, understanding DPS rotations, not only in Warcraft but in other games, uh, and also there was this clip called BM Hunter Guide, I think, MOP something, uh, in parenthesis, in parenthesis, and I mean, it's really. Hold on, I gotta check the time. Yeah, no, but it's it's really, 
it's inspiring. Uh, and I mean, because uh, usually I'm pretty, like, I want to do it my way and blah, 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 and pride fucking with me and I don't know. But this time I'm really going for, like, okay, what are the best of the best doing? What can I adapt and use? And, and, and how can I learn from what they're doing? And with the openers, he, you know, that's the thing with BM, you know, BM hunters. You have tons of different ways of opening um, when you start a fight. Uh, and you can get some pretty fucking high damage. And uh, the thing with BM is it's all, it's all about cooldowns. Like lining up your cooldowns, doing things at the right time. And I'm... I'll be honest, my UI is not where it should be. I'm not, my action bars are not where they should be. I, I've i had moments when I've been like, yes, this really works. I love this. But, the, I mean, since dual spec, you got to make sure that you don't change. I mean, it's, I don't know. I uh, And I'm on a Mac, so I, taking screenshots is not as easy as it used to on the PC, but I'm loving the Mac. So there's a couple of things there that I need to work on, but that's my own laziness. You know, it all comes down to how far are you willing to go? I mean, will you let that stop you from becoming who you should or want to or whatever? I mean, is the motivation that I was about to say short, but anyways. So that's something I'll, I guess I need to I need to sort out what I want to do first. And the funny part is right now I want to do the opener, but I mean, my opener is limited by my odd action bar setup. I have, um, like on the lower part of the action bar, if you go like from 1 to 9 or whatever, you have the usual uh, arcane shots and the kill command and cobra shots. And I had fervor on 4 and I was like, today or yes, no, yesterday, I was like, why the hell do I have fervor on 4? I mean, I don't use it that often and that's a waste of a very good key. And then I noticed that I changed things around, so Stampede was off my uh, entire action bar setup, so I, I wasn't using Stampede in the last raid. I mean, there, there's, just, there's just tons of things, and I, I gotta make sure things happen. Because um, I, was, I was really pushing myself. Uh, when we Last time we raided, we actually raided two... I was in two raids, so it was fr Friday and Saturday. And that won't happen again, because uh, that's not popular when it comes to, like, taking care of babies and stuff. And I understand that, so I'm going to get my priorities straightened up, and straightened out, I guess. And also, not only that, uh, make sure that I communicate. That it, Like, if I want to raid, i got to make sure that I talk to my uh, girlfriend about it. But, I mean, I'm, I'm a... And this is something that um, Powered Gold asked me on Twitter, Jim Youngkin. Are you averse to conflict, Grace? And I was like, yep, I am, man. <laughs> no doubt about it. I'm a, I'm a, I think, you know, and this is something I mentioned on some episode about family structures and things. And I mean, that's that's the whole thing. You know, if you grow up in a family, and you gotta be the one that take takes care care of things, and you're like the economic backbone, and also the father. Although you're a young kid, uh, there, you gotta build up strategies in order to make things work. And one of those strategies was strategies was. Uh, to become averse to conflict might be earlier than that but I don't know it, it's it's I'm just averse to it something I'm working on and I mean it's funny because if I would have told her about yeah I'm, I'm planning on raiding and blah blah is it okay blah blah give her a chance to tell her mind well speak her mind whatever and Right, so it got cut off by the alarm clock. No, but I mean, if I had let her speak her mind, um, she would have felt a lot better. I probably would have felt a lot better. Unless she would jump the gun and just execute me on spot. Uh, but I mean, um, I mean, it really comes down to communication. And it's something I'm working on. But uh, yeah, man, it's, it's fucking awesome being back in raiding. I'm loving... Mists is really fun. It's, it's really pushing the whole... Um, like, well, some people would say that it's dumbed down, it's so much easier, and blah, blah, blah. 
But I mean, I'm not. I wrote a tweet about this too, and it's like I'm not a casual player. I'm a hardcore player. Uh, and like in everything I do, I, I get kind of fucking caught up in it, in a sense. Um, but that does not mean that I build a lot of skill within it. It's more like I just go completely OCD and have to like I have to do this. Um, but then I use my own strategies and you know doing that, and then you know things take forever, and I don't know. But it's um, yeah, it's fun times, man, and, and it's it's fun to see because I. Um, I haven't been raiding much in mists at all, but it was it was for my own part. It was good for me to see that I could hold my own uh, doing damage and also survivability and 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 movement and being prepared and pre planning and you know all kinds of things. So it's it's good to to notice that the listening to podcasts where they where they speak about raiding, you know, catching up on stuff. Uh, I mean. Also getting back to, like, when it comes to boss guides, for the longest time I've been watching videos, but I'm really getting back to, like, reading on Icy Veins, thanks to the um, the interview on Twizcast. I just, like, realized that, yeah, man, back in BC, I was reading, well, yeah, I was reading, and I was reading boss guides. You know, I could, there wasn't that, that many guys on YouTube, I mean, there were some, but I mean, I was reading a lot. And I think, for my part, when it comes to comprehension and really understanding what the fuck's going on, reading uh, makes a lot more sense. It, it helps me to get a picture of, oh, this is happening, and this is, you know, it, it's happening because of this, and I don't know, it's, it's, it, uh, it's yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely going to use Icy Veins a lot more. And when it comes to Garage All, it's, there's a lot of things... That I mean, there are some de- details that I missed, but it's uh, which I always do. I mean, it's it's kind of because I'm the, I'm the kind of person that I mean, if I'm in a raid, I want to learn by doing. Also, not not saying that I want to wipe the raid 20 times just so I, that I can learn to get out of that shit. But I mean, um, seeing the mechanics makes me want to get better quicker in a sense because if I'm the only one messing up. You know, I gotta shape that shit up, and I and I won't be afraid to ask, like, okay, what did I do wrong? What should I do? Blah blah. Um, but you know, if you uh, is it called back forward? What the hell? No, if you go reverse, not reverse. If you backspace back, f- I'm, I'm looking for a video like a VCR reference here. If you backslash, <laughs> never mind. But anyways, uh, no, but if okay, if you go back. Let's talk in plain English here. If we go back a couple of years, two, one, I don't know. Um, I would not be as open for that part. You know, that the whole, like, what can I do to um, uh, accommodate is so wrong. Uh, what can I do to get past this obstacle, as an example. Um, but it also, but that's also part of the whole, like, family structure thing, where it's, where it's like, you know, in my family, you, you're not allowed to do things in the wrong way you're not allowed to be weak you're not allowed to ask for help um you're supposed to be like positive and outgoing and uh, i don't know there's tons of things and all these things they affect you like subconsciously well affect me sorry i'm saying you but that's because i talk in that kind of way when i talk to myself (laughs) so so if I say you, I don't mean you. I just mean you as in me, as in you, Grace. You know? Got it? Cool. So, I mean, there's tons of things that I'm working on. And it, the funny part is, as I'm working on those parts in real life, they also affect the way that I raid. Because, I mean, it, at the end of the day, you play the game in the same way that you that you act as a person. You know? If you're all OCD and, you know, control freak, which is another thing that I am, <laughs> I mean, then you, uh, you end up doing things where you... Uh, try to have control and that's maybe why i've been going for the whole approach of no but i'll do it my way if it's wrong it's wrong but at least it's my way i mean there's tons of things that i'm coming to realize even now as i'm recording i'm not going to spend time on that but i mean fuck me dude rating is great i'm like i'm really loving it and i'm going to work on the openers i do not think that i'll have as much time as i'd like to to uh, be on the target dummies and even set up my action bars but i i really need to get going with the with the openers because I really want to, like, if I raid once a week, I want to smash things completely. You know, I want to I wanna be so good so it's like 
my God, where the hell did he get that skill from? You know, and I'm even, I'm kind of provoking my own guild by being like, hey, I don't care about, I don't care about gear levels. Well, eye levels. Um, I'm going to gear up through Mogashon Vaults and I'm going to become a better player. And by doing that, you will see me try and, you know, like if you get better eye levels, let's say you get, um, I think I said 585 yesterday when I recorded. But I mean, that's because I'm thinking of my current eye level, which is 570. Um, yeah, and realistically, I mean, I won't get 489. I, w- I mean, I won't reach 489 through only raiding in Mogishan Vault. So I mean, that that won't happen. We don't we don't raid that often. I mean, that would be like in 2014 or something. If you raid like once a week, I mean, that's that, that's not happening. Unless you get multiple gear drops, of course. Hold on, I gotta check the time. Yeah, so, um, it's interesting, man. There, there's tons of things going on, and, um, lost my train of, train, my train of thought completely. Um, no, but really, it, it's, it's, uh, mists is, is a lot about weight awareness. It's about using your own cooldowns, even, if, like, regardless of which class you have, you gotta use your cooldowns. You gotta make sure you stay alive. And I really like the way they've changed the hunter with uh, deterrence. Now I have no idea if, and they spoke about this on the hunt, hunting party podcast, well, out TPS hunting party podcast. Um, I listened to two episodes this past weekend, and that was good because one got uploaded yesterday and one was uploaded the day before. But um, I think I don't know. Uh, it's Monday, anyways, and that's another thing this this episode is recorded like across days and i'm not even mentioning the dates so it's the 19th of november today so now you know um no but it's it's really cool and uh i'm really enjoying the whole mists raiding thing and knowing that i can wipe the raid if i'm uninformed forces me to be more informed well well informed and also to be more um like hard on myself I guess you could say like if I if I don't do the DPS that I should whatever that is I'm going to look at those numbers because I really I mean if if I have the choice between looking at numbers or looking at numbers that are from the raid as an example I'll choose the numbers from the raid um and I I should put the gear in a sim simulator and just look at like uh Zahara's spreadsheet and just look at like what kind of damage should I do theoretically and then where am I and then kind of like okay cool that means that this is like the perfect rotation thing nothing's you know off and this is where i am right now and that's without the openers so that means that i can expect at least blah 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 i mean it's 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 theory crafting and uh i'm not i'm not a spreadsheet person but i mean if that's if that's what it takes to become a better raider i mean of course i will you know and that's what I'm loving with this right now. You know, I'm I'm really I've really chosen to go that way. Like, okay, I'm raiding. That's what I'm doing now. You know, I'll do food. I'll make do some gold, make some gold. Sorry, and um, you know, enjoy myself. But I mean, at the end of the day, raiding is the first thing that 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 I will focus on. You know, and if I only can do one thing, that's what I want to do. And the best part about that is it really focuses the way that I play. Like, if I have four hours on a Friday and I'm in a raid three hours, I mean, that really sets a great uh, uh, parameter parameter shit a great grammar in Swedish fuck me uh, what the hell frame grid yeah better, better off using grid yeah but it says a great grid for me to stay within you know like time grid or some timetable I have no idea uh, but yeah fuck this I'm stressed man gotta get back to work so this just fell apart but rating i'll get back to you guys and hopefully i'll pick apart parts of this um recording and dive deeper and and really like okay this is what i mean here this is what i mean there and and really like uh instead of because now i'm all over the place you know that's the way i usually am but uh i I really feel that this topic rating is is so fucking intricate and interesting that i need to dig deep into it and also, the, the best part is, I mean, I'm recording these, and it helps me keep track of what the fuck it is I'm learning, you know? It's a, it's a, good, uh, it's a great thing. But if you haven't, check out World of Logs. Because if you're in a guild that's struggling in any way, uh, you got to, you know, check out World of Logs. You sign up, create a private guild, you know, just try things out, you know, uh, upload logs. 
and, and just look at the numbers and see what you can make out of it just by doing that. And then eventually you, you know, you can start comparing and whatever. And when that happens, I, I think things can start flying. And I'm not even at that po at that spot yet, but I'm really feeling that this could. I mean, World of Logs is definitely it's a great thing because it's, it's like the truth. You know, it's like the log. This is what happened. You know, you can't fake it. There is no. It, I'm liking it. And you can really see the DPS, especially for hunters. It's like, hey, I started out great. And then, my God. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, my God, there I go again after five minutes. Uh, but that's without stampede, so no comment. But, I mean, it's, it's awesome. You know, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so, as I've said before, Mist is great. I'm Grise. Grise, my God. Hi, Grise. What's happening, Mike? <laughs> uh, Mist is great. Um... I'm enjoying myself, so have fun, do whatever you do, and keep on filling your guild with uh, relevant stuff. Make that shit happen. Yes, I had to make tons of sea mist noodles this weekend, and it feels good, because I actually, Friday, I was, I was using, um, no, actually, yeah, fuck, I can't even remember the days, man. Yeah, okay, anyways, Friday, I was using, um, the Pandaren Banquet and some Seamus Noodles. And then Saturday, the only thing I used was my Seamus Noodles so that I could maximize whatever I had. Because at the end of the day, I mean, that's what it comes down to. You gotta, you gotta maximize each, each and every stat you have and just fucking push. And that's the only way to get better. And I mean, that's, you can't cheese that if you wanna, I mean, if you really wanna get better, you know, you, you gotta use whatever you have. So, there's tons of things to improve. But uh, guys, I'll let you guys go. See you guys later, and I'm out. Raise peace.